Hello. Hi. I'm Chelsea still, and I'm still turning 30 soon, and I'm still going to give you and me advice. And today I'm going to talk about imposter syndrome. Ooh. And it's less talked about opposite, which goes hand in hand, which I think is just as bad. And I call that, yeah, I guess you're right, syndrome. So imposter syndrome, most of us are probably familiar with it, especially if you're watching this video, um, is the feeling that you're not supposed to be where you are. So for instance, you don't feel like an adult and <laughs> it feels weird to be turning 30 um, because you don't think you've done enough adult things. Um, let me take my glasses off for the glare. So, or maybe you have a job and you feel like you're not qualified to be there, like someone else with more years of experience should have gotten the promotion or I don't know, whatever it is, you have a band and you don't feel like you're good enough at music to have people come watch you and like pay for your music and pay for your tickets to come see you or something like that. So this happens to me quite often. Actually, almost every time my band performs, halfway through performing while I'm still on the stage, I get this feeling like I don't deserve to be here. Like, I'm not good enough at writing songs. Um, I don't have enough confidence. I'm not popular enough on social media, whatever it is. And I get really depressed and sometimes it's really hard for me to finish the set. Um, and then I'm a jerk afterwards and my friends try to tell me it was good and just, I'm just, I can't even listen to that. I'm like, you're lying. You're just trying to be nice to me. And then I reflect on it and I realize that they aren't lying. But in the moment, it always feels like I'm faking it. Like I'm faking being a band person, even though I've been playing now for over 15 years. So imposter syndrome is not a thing that goes away as you get older. It actually can get a lot worse as you get more responsibilities. Um, and it can go pretty deep. Like for me, this probably sounds really weird, but I've always kind of felt like I don't even... Like I'm not supposed to exist. Like I'm not as much of a person as other people. And I've always felt like a weirdo for thinking that, but I think there's actually a lot of other people that, that feel that way. Um, they kind of feel like, you know, when you're born, the universe sort of like gives you a, a serial number or something. They're like, all right, Catherine Elizabeth, number 78B2500 whatever. You're going to grow up to be an engineer and you're gonna get married and have three kids and then you're gonna live in Connecticut or whatever it is. And I feel like I didn't get that card. <laughs> like like they, they forgot when I was born because I was an accident and I just wasn't supposed to be in this life. Like maybe I had past lives and this one wasn't real. I don't know. It sounds really weird. Like I'm a ghost or something. And I actually used to test that theory when I was younger when I was like in kindergarten and first grade and stuff I'd be like sitting around the, the table and the teacher would be passing out pencils or snacks or protractors or whatever and I'd kind of be like just sitting there quietly and I'd kind of just sort of shut down my energy and I tested this a bunch of times and I wouldn't get the snack or the protractor like they'd miss me and then I'd raise my hand after and I got kind of a delight almost in this. I was like, that's proof I don't exist. I'm not as much of a person as these other kids in this class. And so that is kind of the opposite of imposter syndrome. It's like, yeah, you're right syndrome. So other examples, like I've been applying for jobs for years and I haven't gotten any of them. <laughs> it's been like three years and I haven't gotten a full-time job. And every single time in the interview, I have imposter syndrome. I'm like, I'm not professional enough to be here, even though I have a master's degree and all this experience. 
And then afterwards when they call me or they email you or they don't email you and they say or don't say anything and you didn't get the job, I always feel like, yeah, I knew that was coming. Like they figured it out. I'm just not as much of a person. I'm just meant, I'm just unlucky and I'm not meant to get any opportunities. Uh, yep. So whether it's people saying they like my band and uh, me not believing it, um, or me not getting an opportunity, you know, there's a couple bands I wanted to be in that I didn't get in, and I'm like, yeah, I guess I'm just not cool enough, like I'm not enough enough, whatever it is, that's kind of the thing that goes hand in hand with imposter syndrome, is like accepting your crappy fate, instead of realizing, now this is the moral of the story here, the world just is not fair. You know, I have friends with the same degree as me who have jobs that make three, four, five times uh, as much money as I do. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's really hard not to feel like there's just something wrong with me, but I realize the world just isn't fair. Like if we like, imposter syndrome comes from the feeling that everyone who's like in power or who's doing really well, just worked really hard and is a really great person and that's why they got there. Um, if that were the case, why would there be so many like CEOs and heads of companies that are terrible people and had their titles handed to them from their dad or whatever? And in music, we have this idea that the best bands, the bands that just make the best music and are the most hardworking, those are the ones that get famous. No. I know so many amazing, talented, wonderful, nice people who are like the best musicians who are a secret. The bands that get the most attention are the ones who have the most money for PR campaigns, honestly. Um, and sometimes it is a really wonderful band that gets noticed and that's like a, a fluke. But my point is the world isn't fair and it doesn't just reward people for hard work and for being good. It, it's random. So if you're in a position and you're like, I don't know if I deserve to be here, it doesn't matter. You're there from a bunch of random instances. And the other thing is, no one can tell if you feel that way. People are always like, like when I do that thing with my band where I feel terrible after I play and I feel like I messed it all up and I suck and I shouldn't be playing music. No one ever knows. I always tell people like, I felt terrible during that set. Like, like I don't deserve, deserve to exist while I was playing and my friends are like really like you looked badass you were rocking out and I'm like I looked that way because I felt so insecure that I had to just headbang into the music to let out that like crappy energy and that's one thing you can do is if you just feel so insecure that you think you're gonna like disappear into a void of like not existing from being just so <laughs> insecure what you can do is just focus on the thing you're doing and that's what I'm gonna probably come back to in each of these videos the same with confidence don't think about whether you're confident enough think about the thing you're doing um, and so same with imposter syndrome don't think whether you should be in that job just do that job think about that job if you want to be there and do it as well as you can um, don't think about whether you're supposed to be in this band. Just play the bass, play the drums, sing your song. Um, don't think about whether you're supposed to be on that stage. Enjoy, enjoy what you're doing, because at the end of the day, you really don't know whether you're supposed to be there, and that's not a real thing. The world is random. The world rewards people in a totally random way. No one knows whether you feel like you're supposed to be there, and there's no rules to that. So just, just be there and do the thing. <laughs> and if you know, you get in the other situation where something crappy happens to you, there's no point in saying, oh, I knew this would happen. Like, that's what I do. And when other people do that, it drives me crazy. And the reason it drives me crazy is it's such a me thing. But when something crappy happens to you, just be like, oh, the world's random. It rewarded someone else today. Um, who knows what it's gonna do tomorrow. And I'll just keep trying. I know that's not like the most uplifting advice, but just, you know, the world's not fair. Like people, people get cancer, people die in horrible accidents. You know, the bad things happen to nice, good people who are working really hard and good things happen to people 
who suck. So there's no rules to it. So there's really no reason to feel bad or to feel too good even about what randomly happens. Like, enjoy it, but just remember, just do the thing you're doing. <laughs> you're, if it's happening, then it's real. And if you're there in it, it's real. Then you're not an imposter because you're really there and it's really real. The only way it feels like an imposter is in your head. It's just be in the world doing the thing. I don't know. That might have been too wishy-washy, but that's what I try to tell myself. And I hope it helps. So, ugh, I'll see you at the next one. Bye.